In this video, I'm going to share with you my tips that will help you create fine lines with your airbrush. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do in order to get my paint ready so that I can do some fine lines is I'm going to experiment with two different mixes within this video. The first one will be a one to one ratio, so equal parts paint and reducer or thinner depending on what your brand recommends and the second one 70% reducer 30% paint mix and that's going to be for fine detail the paint I'm going to be using is trident water-based airbrush colors and the color is indigo blue and the other variable to our paint mix will be the PSI setting so this one to one ratio will run at about a 30 PSI now I'm going to do these mixes by eye Don't have to mix up the whole bottle, that'll do. And I've got my reducer in one of these squirty bottles. And I'm going to go ahead now and add the reducer. Seal it up. Give it a good shake. And that's our one to one mix now ready to go. You can see these Trident mixing cups are really handy. They've got the flip top lid. Same size as the 50 ml bottles, but the good thing is they've got this marble. Great for storing your paint. Now this one I'm going to utilize the whole bottle for this 30% paint, 70% reducer mix. Again, this is going to be by eye. And now adding the reducer. Again, depending on what brand of paint you're using, these mixes may vary. And it also depends on the humidity in your studio or where you're spraying. You may need to run your paints a little bit thicker or thinner depending on the temperature. And you can straight away see that the one on the right is a lot thinner than the one on the left. So that's our 3070 mix and our one to one. Okay, so the first test I'm going to be using a cheap airbrush, just one that you can find on Amazon, starting off with that one-to-one -one mix. Because this mix is thicker, you can run at a higher PSI. So I'm running at 30 PSI for this particular mix. I'll go ahead and remove the air cap, exposing the needle. Just do some quick warm-ups. You can see it's spraying nicely. And then up close, you can see even at this thickness, I'm able to get fine detail out of it. And considering this isn't a very expensive airbrush at all, you may find that something like this will just do the trick for you. You don't need to invest in a really expensive brush, especially if you're only going to use it a couple of times. I'm not getting the best spray pattern, but this brush has also been used before. It's not brand new and the needle is slightly damaged. So just keep that in mind. I don't even know if you can get replacement parts for it, but generally at this price, they usually just use it. And then if it breaks, buy another one, but no problem there getting fine detail with this brush at that mix. Okay, same paint mix, but with a different brush now, a nicer brush, the PS289 GSI Creos. This runs a 0.3 mil needle, still at that 30 PSI. Again, quick warm up spray, always a good idea. And you can see this one straight away performs much nicer than that previous cheaper brush. getting some nice fine dots, no problem at all. And you can see a few of the techniques that I'm using here. I'm using my hand as a guide to steady myself, keeping that air pressed down at all times, just pulling back ever so slightly on that trigger finger. So if you watch my trigger finger, even when I'm doing the dots, obviously you just gotta be careful not to go like that, otherwise you're gonna spider it out. but really nice detail from this brush. 
And I will pop some links in the description below to all of the brushes that I'm using in this particular video. Performing extremely well at that one-to-one -one mix. And you can see even with a 0.3mm you can get really fine detail. You don't have to necessarily spend loads of money on an Iwata Micron if you don't need to. They are amazing, don't get me wrong, super smooth, but you also need to be fairly experienced to get the performance out of them. And if you'd prefer to stick with the Iwata brand, the similar brush to this would be the Iwata Eclipse. Really great brush, 0.35, but to be honest, you can still go super fine with this, no problem at all. Now using the 0.18mm, so this one's super fine, GSI Creos PS771. This is the top of the line brush for the Creos brand. It's their Micron equivalent. And as you can see, this one as well as the 289, both have these MAC valves, which are handy because you can just drop the air pressure coming out of your airbrush from the front of that brush, which allows you to over thin your paint even more and reduce it down without touching the PSI on your compressor. So again, at 30 PSI, one to one mix on this one. Just a quick spray out. And a couple of tips for doing lines. So always look ahead. That'll help you to keep your line straight. Try not to just start and then move and then stop because you're going to get these heavier areas at the end which you don't want. And like I said, use your hand as a guide and paint on, paint off. So air on, paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off. I'll link up to one of my videos which will show you a column technique where you can practice doing lines. Now we'll do some fine dots. As you can see, this brush does go a little bit finer and it does that with ease. However, there's not that much difference. And if I really spent the time with the 289 that I showed you earlier, or even with an Eclipse, then you can definitely go as fine with any of those brushes. So I'm getting a bit of tip drying now. And if you do have a go at the column exercise, it is one of the ones that I also showcase in my online course. Don't get disheartened, it's an extremely difficult exercise. It takes a long time to master, but if you do it correctly and you keep practicing it, it will help your line work. And it will definitely help your double action technique, which is so important. So you can see some nice fine detail through there. I sprayed out a little bit here because I touched the surface. Be careful of doing that, especially when you remove the air cap. It does allow for finer detail, but it's very easy to get up too close and potentially damage your needle. Okay, so we're gonna go backwards now, starting with this one at that 70-30 mix. And this time I'm at 18 to 20 PSI. Starting to come through. You can see I am able to go final with this, so the mix does help. I'd probably, for this particular brush, turn the PSI up just a fraction, so that's going to need some fine tuning, but you can definitely notice that it is finer ever so slightly. I mean, it was already fine with that one to one mix. Now let's adjust the MAC valve on the front of the airbrush, see if that makes a difference. So I'll wind that right in. You can see I'm definitely able to go nice and fine with this brush. But this is really what it comes down to. Everyone's always asking me what's the perfect paint mix. Well, there are so many different factors involved from brand of paint, your skill level as an artist, whether you like using thinner paints or you want quicker coverage and how long your paint's been sitting around. Does it need to be strained? 
as well as the humidity where you're spraying. So it's very hard to give a definitive answer. Generally what I recommend is utilizing the ratios that I'm giving you, testing them out, and then adjusting accordingly. So if the paint's too thin and it's watery, add more paint. You know, don't add as much reducer or thinner. If it's too thick, do the opposite. And you can also turn up the PSI when the paint is too thick or lower it down if it is thinner. And now I'm gonna do the same with the 289. Also running really nicely. This one also has the Mac valve, so you can utilize the benefits that I showed you earlier. Super smooth and still a bit of fine stuff. Try and go up near those lines so you can see the difference. Sometimes it takes a little while to flow through, especially if it's really fine and the PSI is low. I haven't cleaned these airbrushes out, I've just flushed them through. So there might be some residual paint in there to start with. You can pretty much get the same sort of thickness. I don't think this one makes that much difference. But again, you could tweak it a bit further, get the mix perfect. To be able to go that fine with a 0.3 is pretty good. I don't think you're going to need to go much finer than that. You can see it's definitely possible. Okay, finally, the cheap airbrush. See how that goes. Again, I'm at that lower PSI. So utilizing this mix, even though it's not consistent, I don't really expect it from an airbrush like this. But you can see I'm definitely getting a finer line out of it. So this 18 to 20 PSI with that 7030 seems to be a lot better for this particular cheaper airbrush. Pretty nice line through there. Now yeah, it's playing up on me, but it's doing double lines now. Cool effect, instant drop shadow. But like I said before, this isn't perfectly new, so not giving it a very fair test. But in some respects, it's probably similar to what you can expect because you could buy 10 of these and they're all going to perform slightly differently. They're just not machined as precise. And you can see from this test that you can also get nice fine detail out of it. So I think all in all, you can see why it's important to play around with the thickness of the paint, the PSI, and another couple of tips to take away, always use your hand as a guide if you can. If you're working on an automotive surface, then be sure to wear a glove just on the hand that you're resting on the surface with so that you don't contaminate that surface. Another tip is always keep the air on at all times. Pull back for paint and paint on, paint off. Definitely go check out that exercise that I discussed, the column exercise or the ladder exercise, whatever you want to call it. That video, as well as other videos, will be linked up in the description below. So to continue your learning, you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com or you can check out some of these other videos that I've got listed here. And as always, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.